Okay, welcome back after the break. Uh, just before we went for our break, we were uh, uh, doing a little detailed study of Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 to verse 17. We looked at uh, verse 15, uh, where uh, we're trying to establish uh, uh, what Paul is saying uh, when he's trying to prove uh, the deity of Christ um, here in this passage uh, in verses uh, uh, 15 to 18, in verse 15, he's talking about, uh, the, he's presenting the supremacy of the person of Christ in relationship to God. And verses 16 to 17, he's talking about his supremacy or uh, uh, that he is God in relationship to, in relation to uh, creation. And uh, in verses 18, he's talking about his relation uh, to the church, Christ's relation to the church. And uh, was we studied verse 15 in a little detail. We looked at what uh, Paul, the Apostle Paul, meant when he said that uh, Jesus is the image of the invisible God, and also that he is uh, the latter part of uh, of verse 15, where he says he's the firstborn over all uh, creation. And we said uh, firstborn means that um, basically denotes two things about Jesus Christ that he precedes the whole of creation, that he's before creation, and through him all things are created, uh, by him all things were created, and also that he is sovereign over all creation, which means that he is uh, uh, independent, supreme, absolute over all uh, creation. Okay, so that is where we uh, stopped. We'll continue uh, looking at verse 16. Uh, any other questions or thoughts that have come up uh, in your mind during the break um, based on verse 15 and 16, what we studied, or sorry, verse 15? Anything? Okay, if uh, there are no questions on any clarifications required, we'll proceed with verse 16. Uh, like uh, as Nina Santosh had read for us, for him, by him, all things in heaven and on earth were created uh, by him. So look at how Paul, uh, you know, continues writing this uh, great passage on Christology here. Uh, he says, he uses the word for, uh, you know, uh, by using this word for, you know, he's basically... Um, uh, you know, begins his uh, explanation or he's giving proof why Jesus is sovereign over all creation. Okay. Uh, sorry, Nina Santosh, you said our God has a son. Oh, when you are uh, asked about the question about um, our God has a son, um when you know uh when see the basically what we are trying to understand we're try, trying to understand uh god uh in terms of the trinity which has been uh revealed to us uh, uh of course in the old testament uh there were prophecies concerning the son we we looked at um, isaiah chapter uh Nine, we looked at uh, that, you know, for unto us the Son is born, uh, and also the work of the Holy Spirit. So they knew that Jesus, God, is Father. They knew that, uh, you know, He uh, his, is a spirit being. Uh, but this whole thing about God the Son was they had not much of clarity about uh, that in the Old Testament, but it you know, with the revelations that were given to us, with Jesus coming, uh, you know, uh, uh, God becoming man, uh, it gives us more clearer understanding of the Trinity. Now, uh, God does not need, uh, you know, the Trinity to understand himself or for his self uh, explanation because uh, he doesn't, you know, they, 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 they don't see themselves as God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, so to say. You know, just for our understanding. But uh, when we say that, you know, uh, God has a son, it's not that, you know, uh, uh, God is married and then he has an offspring, he has a son. Uh, but what we're saying basically is that, uh, you know, the son is an exact representation of uh, who the father is. 
you know, uh, like we have, you know, people say like father, like son, uh, like son, like father, you know. So uh, a, a son is a, a kind of an, uh, an the offspring of the parents and uh, has the same characteristic or the same uh, nature of the uh, of their uh, their parents. So, you know, uh, here we're talking about nature. When you're saying that when Jesus says God is my father, he's talking about his nature, that he's not a human being, but he is God because he has the same nature as his father. Hence, he is God. So he's he's relating, they're relating to themselves as God the father, God the son in terms of uh, their nature and uh, essence that we can understand. You know, uh, if I say uh, 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 he's my father. So we, I'm saying that, you know, he's a human being and hence I'm also a human being. We have the same nature of uh, being human or human beings. And uh, part of that whole entire nature of being human beings, I have specific characteristics that are attributed uh, to my parents, to my mother or to my uh, father. So when Jesus is saying that, you know, uh, when uh, 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 that, God is my father, uh, you know, uh, referring to him as a son. Uh, he's talking about, basically, he's talking about his nature. You know, he's talking about uh, uh, his existence, where or his, uh, uh, you know, where does he come from, his origins, his roots, where he comes from. He's saying, I'm not, hey, I'm not human, uh, even though I am a, a human being that you can see me, but my 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 real identity is that I am God because my uh, origin is uh, in heaven. That because uh, and uh, my nature is that of God, and hence I am God myself. So that is the whole concept in how we see uh, uh, God as Son. We look at that in the terms of that He has the same nature, the same essence. Uh, uh, of God the Father, and hence He is God Himself. So that is why we uh, 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 we say God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Also, uh, to explain the roles that each one of them had. Did that help, Nina? Yes, Father. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Okay, we'll move on. That was a good question. Thank you. Uh, so verse uh, uh, 16, you know, he starts it by saying, for by him all things. So uh, the apostle begins by using this word for, you know, he, the uh, apostle uh, Paul begins to basically explain or give proof why Jesus Christ is sovereign over all creation. So he's basically pointing the readers, the reason uh, why Christ is in the image of God is because uh, he was there even before creation. Uh, he was there uh, and he was the one who created all things because he is the uh, creator. So he's basically now going on to give uh, explanation or proof uh, to why Jesus is sovereign over all creation. So he's pointing out uh, Jesus Christ is in the image of God because he is the creator and um, you know he says all things in the natural and spiritual realms were created by Christ through him and for him and in him all things consist so we're going to look at these phrases which are very very important all things were created by him created through him created for him and in him all things consist so we're going to look at what all of these phrases really mean uh, uh, and hence uh, showing us or proving to us uh, that Jesus Christ is God. So all things were created by him. Who is the him uh, here that Apostle Paul is writing about? Who is the him? Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. Okay. So Nina John says, when we talk to unbelievers about Jesus being the creator, Anything else that can point to this apart from the word of God? We talk to unbelievers about Jesus being the creator. Anything else that can point to this apart from the word of God? Oh, you mean apart from just the word of God, uh, can anything else uh, 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 prove? Yes, we just went through that whole, uh, you know, series on um, uh, 
on uh, on creation and and all of that it was a wonderful uh, learning experience uh, basically you know um, uh, if you look at creation itself you know uh, as uh, paul says i think in romans chapter 1 uh, but not just going back to the word again but uh, using that but you know just proving in romans chapter 1 uh, in i think in verse uh, the son he says uh, you know um, uh, for creation itself uh, you know reveals yeah uh, verse 20 romans chapter 1 verse 20 says for since the creation of the world his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and godhead so that they are without excuse so what paul is basically saying is hey even if you don't have the law even if you no one has spoken the gospel to you and you're trying to wonder who god is look at creation you know creation itself you know the order the perfection uh, uh, the uh, 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 the uh, you know the way things just work so uh, uh, in in unity in uh, in perfection uh, that it, 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 we we can't say it came about by a big bang or it just evolved by itself or uh, it just happened by a series of acceleration or over the years you know it just kind of uh, uh, regenerated itself into uh, life forms or life being uh, uh, so you know uh, if we say that then where is the conducive environment the temperatures and everything that was needed but uh, like Paul is saying, just look at creation. Creation itself, you know, reveals uh, the glory of God. It talks about uh, uh, the attributes of God. It talks about uh, the, his eternal power. And so people are without um, uh, excuse. So, you know, uh, just looking at creation, the order, the perfection, the beauty, uh, uh, the way it just works, you know, uh, uh, it, it just proves to us that... Uh, you know, uh, there is a creator. Uh, also, you know, if you look at our own uh, human bodies, the way it works, the way it functions, you know, nobody can say that it just came about by evolution, a process of how cells organize themselves and regenerated and, you know, kind of uh, ordered themselves by themselves to form organs to work in such a perfection because uh, when scientists were asked to prove their theory about uh, you know uh, evolution of man they they failed you know uh, because how can cells have the exact temperature the exact uh, uh, the nucleus the uh, 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 the ribonucleic acids and all of that to form that perfect environment for the regeneration for the evolution of a man which is impossible so you just look at our own human body it just proves to us that there is a, a, a creator uh, did that explain what you were asking nina did i get your question right or uh, you're looking for something else yes Go ahead, Nina. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. So, no, what I, yeah, so I know personally that uh, Jesus is God and that he's creator. Mm -hmm. There are no doubts there. But then when we uh, talk to someone, and so when we explain who Jesus is, that he is creator. Yeah, I know, uh, I mean, I was listening to what, said that there is no doubt there as to that you know the whole created world reveals god god yes jesus how i mean like when we say when we speak to someone so how do we see the all the other attributes like if we want to tell someone and uh, we are saying that jesus is who he is and uh, there is any a number of attributes which say that if we want to know who god is we look at jesus they know there's no problem there and there's no confusion. But how do we say to someone that, because when, when we say creator, then he is the ultimate, right? So to mm -hmm. explain that to someone who does not know that, who does not have the word of God, then, you know, when, it's, when we say creator, how do we point to people and say, yes, Jesus is the creator? I hope that's not too 
Mm. Not too complicated, my question. No, 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 no. It's a good question. Actually, it's a very, uh, it is a, a relevant question and uh, people uh, would ask. So, um, yes, when they ask that, you know, how can you say Jesus is the creator? Uh, like, again, here, uh, uh, you know, Paul is trying to prove that uh, Jesus is God. And one way he's proving that he is God is that he created uh, uh, all things. So he was there even uh, there before uh, creation, that he is the one who created. And uh, also Jesus' own uh, saying, you know, uh, what we looked at uh, in uh, in the Gospel of John, you know, uh, John chapter 15, that, uh, you know, uh, and John chapter 1, in him was life, uh, the Zoe life, the life of God. And so they knew that, you know, it's only God who can give life. And uh, John chapter 15, that, uh, you know, uh, uh, he is the one who created everything. So it's only God who can create everything. And so, you know, uh, so we're actually ascribing uh, that he is God by proving that he is a creator and proving from creation as well that he is uh, God. Did that help? <laughs> so you're basically saying uh, how can we prove that uh, you know he is God from creation is that what you're saying Also, Genesis chapter 1, uh, verse 26, uh, also says, you know, let us make man in our own image. Uh, we will also look at uh, these passages here, you know, that talks about his uh, role in creation, uh, which will also help you to understand, you know, um, Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. Uh, also, um, uh, you know, uh, 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 Acts chapter 17, verse 28, it says, In him we live and move and have our being. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6 says that uh, through him, uh, uh, you know, it was through him that all things were and through him whom we uh, live. So these are some of the scripture passages that uh, we can uh, quote. So you're trying to basically say that how can we prove that Jesus is God uh, by looking at creation? Or we're trying to say that, uh, is that your question? Nina? Okay. Yeah, so, um, you know, uh, how do we prove that Jesus is God is uh, basically, you know, uh, quoting all of these uh, scriptures, uh, but um, uh, saying that, you know, um, uh, Jesus is deity, when we look at it, we are not looking at three different components of God in, in terms of three uh, avatars of God or avatar of God that, you know, is in the other uh, philosophies of other uh, religions. Um, but we're saying that there is one God. We believe in one God. And uh, because of the roles, we're saying God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. But they're one God, one in nature and in essence. And if you're saying that, you know, this whole of creation just cannot be uh, come out by itself. But there is, uh, you know, the hand of a, a supernatural being who is God. And uh, this God is, uh, you know, is, is Jesus Christ. And then. Uh, we prove from uh, scripture passages. Good example given uh, regarding the body. Uh, sorry, uh, what is the example regarding body, Nina? Oh, you mean that uh, different parts of the body but working in perfect unity and oneness? Is that what you're trying to say? Uh, no, I said when you were telling like... Um how we can look at how the cells all function yet. So mm -hmm. to look at it in like, uh, if like how uh, Nina was saying, like uh, apart from the word, how we can look to some has created us in the creation. Uh, sorry, Rin, I was not able to hear you very clearly. 
also you're saying about how our human body is formed and uh, in such perfection and order and that is how we can say that there is a creator and that creator is you know the the, the, the supernatural being who created that is god <laughs> is that what you say yes pastor okay okay um so nina john did that help you can just unmute your mic and uh, repeat the sun because I kind of lost you. Uh, is that okay? Yes, that thing, this thing about life, no, because uh, only God can. I think that I'm, I'm, I'm thinking more from the point of view of the uh, uh, the people of who don't know uh, the Lord Jesus, right? So mm -hmm. how would they think? But then when we say that in Him was life. And that life, so the ability to give life, and is only only God can do that, mm -hmm. and that is what Jesus did when He came, of course, and He gave that life. But otherwise, also in Him was life. Uh, that really answered my question. That life comes from Him, so that can come only from God. So in that way, yes, <laughs> creation and all of it. I have no doubts in my mind that it's yes. everything is that, that Jesus is is who he is. I'm thinking more from how they would think because they have different concepts of creator and whatever, no? So mm -hmm. from there, that's why I wanted some clarity there. Yeah, that's fine, actually. Thank you. Uh, another thing you could also say is, you know, yeah. uh, what a person reveals uh, and talks about themselves is the statements that they make is, is uh you know uh holds fast to what uh who they are and what they say because you know mm -hmm. many men and women make statements and we still quote them so you know one of the st uh, statements that jesus makes is he says you know uh before abraham was i am uh john chapter mm -hmm. verse 15. Mm -hmm. So when he's saying I am, he's basically saying I am means you know uh, the the uh, the the Hebrew word there is to uh, to be, you know I that which means you know uh, he is self sufficient, self existent, all sufficient, mm -hmm. eternal, unchangeable, and hence he is uh, God. So even if you look at uh, what we're going to study now in Colossians chapter uh, one, you know uh, verse uh, sixteen and seventeen, he talks about how he sustains everything he's not just uh, one who created uh, everything mm. he was, everything was created by him through him but created for him and also in him everything is holding its sustenance it's it's holding uh, everything because everything uh, exists in him consists in him okay so we'll mm -hmm. uh, study that in detail and then maybe you can yeah. get, uh, gather a better understanding okay yes, so here um uh, we, we see in uh, verse 16 uh, of Colossians chapter 1, it says, you know, everything was created um, by him. So the him here is uh, Jesus. So, uh, you know, basically Paul is, Apostle Paul is uh, presenting Jesus as the author of creation. He's saying that Jesus uh, Christ is certainly not a created being. Uh, not even the first created being, as uh, you know, many of them have argued. Uh, uh, but uh, you know, he himself is the one who created all things uh, in heaven and earth. Uh, everything that is material, spiritual, everything that is visible, invisible, everything that we see in uh, and is visible, and everything that's invisible in the natural realm, in the uh, in the spiritual realm, everything that is uh, in heaven on earth, uh, physical, uh, material, everything was created uh, by Him, and we know that only God can create. Okay, and hence we, uh, he's trying to actually explain or give proof why Jesus is sovereign over all creation, um, and you know, uh, and he's also giving us a reason why Christ is the image of God by uh, for proving that he's saying that he is the Creator. So he's saying that everything was created um, by him. Everything that we see that we don't see, visible, invisible, and also we read in Genesis chapter one, verse one. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the um, earth. So basically, in this passage, you know, Paul, as I said, is talking about supremacy 
of the Son of God is talking about supremacy of Jesus Christ. Uh, so Paul is stating the fact that Jesus is the creator and giving us uh, proof uh, of his um, deity. Okay, and um, you know, when we look at the whole of creation, uh, you know, we just stand in wonder uh, and awe uh, and, uh, you know, just ascribe worship and honor. Uh, and that's what we need to do when we look at creation, whether it's our own human body, our cells, or, you know, the flowers, the birds, whatever, you know, just stand in awe of his creation, worship him, give him the glory and honor. Because uh, Revelation chapter 4, verse 11 says, He is worthy to receive all glory, honor, and power because he created all things and uh by his will you know they exist and were created a very important verse revelation chapter 4 verse 11 can one of you please read that revelation chapter 4 verse 11 you are worthy O lord to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they exist and were created thank you so it was created by him. All things were created. It was by his will they exist and that they were uh, created. Okay. So the first phrase that uh, we are looked at is everything was created by him. And Paul goes on to say that everything was created through him, which means that Jesus Christ is the mediator of the entire process of uh, creation. So we could basically, uh, for our understanding, look at it this way. Uh, that God the Father is, uh, you know, planned it. He's the author. He's the one who plans things, designs, uh, thinks about things. Uh, and Jesus is the one who spoke it, and that's why he's the word. And the Holy Spirit is the one who brought it to um, pass. Okay, so uh, Jesus is the mediator of the, of the entire process of creation, uh, which means, you know, God the Father planned it. Jesus spoke it and the Holy Spirit, you know, uh, brought everything to uh, pass. As we uh, look at uh, Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 to 3, which states this uh, facts. And can somebody read uh, Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 to 3, please? God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Thank you, Nina John. Um, so here it clearly tells us that, you know, um, uh, that through him all things were made. He, he, he's the one who created uh, the worlds. He's, he's the, here, here the he is talking, referring to Jesus. Uh, so Jesus made all the worlds. Um, it is through him uh, also that, you know, all everything was created. And also he opposed all things by the word of his power. So if you look at uh, the word here, it's the spoken word. It's not the person of Jesus Christ. That's why it's a small W. But when we look at John chapter 1, it's a capital W. is talking about the person of Jesus Christ. But here he says, you know, uh, Jesus Christ created all things and he upholds all things by the word of his power. So his word is power. What he speaks, what he declares, what he decrees is power. And he's holding everything. He's sustaining all of creation uh, just by his word. Okay. So that is what it means by everything was created uh, through him. The next phrase that we look at is everything was created for him. That means the reason for all creation is so that all creation can glorify him, bring glory um, 
uh, to him uh, and uh, you know creation can manifest the glory of god uh, which means can uh, you know bring about in a visible way uh, uh, a visible ma manifestation of uh, the glory of god or who he is, what he does, his nature, his attributes, his, his works, and also all of creation, uh, you know, can uh, serve him. So the reason why uh, everything was created was it was created for him uh, so that everything can serve him and, you know, serve him in the sense, uh, you know, not being as slaves, uh, not being under him, but, you know, uh, in the sense of uh, bringing glory to him, just worshipping him, giving the glory, honor, and the praise uh, that is due to him. Okay. Uh, we will move on to verse 16. Uh, can somebody read verse 16, please? Colossians chapter 1, verse 16. For by him all things were created that are in heaven, and that are, uh, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all these were created through him and for him. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, uh, you can read verse 17 as well. Sorry, I just wanted to read verse 17, not 16, but you can read verse 17, please. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. Thank you. So here it says that he is before all things, and in him all things uh, consist. So the pronoun he, uh, you know, uh, it, it actually uh, uh, stresses on Christ's unique uh, position, his preeminence above all things. It means that he himself... And he and no one else was before uh, all things, was before time began, was before creation. And it was he who created everything. So he is uh, basically uh, the word he is here in verse 17 describes, you know, Christ's uh, absolute existence as the eternal one, as the I am that, you know, he uh, identifies himself so Paul does not say that he came to be before all things, uh, but he says he is before all things, uh, which means it's 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 the Apostle Paul uh, way of saying um, what uh, Jesus himself declared about himself in John chapter 8, verse 58, uh, that he is the I am. That means he's, you know, it describes Christ's absolute uh, existence, that he is the I am. Um, and that he was, uh, that he is before, he was before all things, he was before time, he was even uh, before creation. And it was because of him that uh, everything was created. It was through him everything that was created and everything, uh, you know, has meaning, has place because of who he is, that he is God. He is the um, I am. Okay. So that is what it means when he says, and he is before all things so you know every word is so important so here he is is basically describing the absolute uh, existence of the eternal uh, i am that he is before all things uh, and that he is uh, god okay and if you continue uh, verse 17 he says before all things so paul uh, said that one of the reasons uh, uh, Christ is over all creation is because he was before uh, all things. So what does Paul mean uh, by Christ being before all things? Uh, means it just basically speaking about the eternity of Christ, that he is eternal. It speaks of Christ's uh, eternity. It speaks that he was not a created being. Uh, he it, it, it speaks that he was uh, uh, there before anything was created. Uh, he has an eternally existed. He, he, uh, he eternally existed even before uh, uh, creation came into being before the foundations of the world uh, was laid. He has eternally existed as part of the Godhead, uh, which we read in John chapter 1, uh, verse 1. And also what we looked at in Micah chapter 5, uh, verse 2, where it says, you know, whose going forth have been 
from of old, from everlasting. We we looked at that uh, reference uh, in the first lesson in Micah chapter 5, verse 2. He says, but thou, Bethlehem Ephrathah, be thou, uh, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall come forth unto me that, uh, that is to be the ruler in Israel, whose going forth have been from of old, from everlasting so it's basically talking about the eternal nature of christ that he is eternal and he has eternally existed as part of the uh, godhead so here micah is predict, uh, predicting that the one who is to come you know the messiah who's to come uh, he he was from everlasting he has eternity past um he was uh, bef that, therefore christ is before all things and um Therefore, you know, uh, he is to be exalted, he is to be uh, uh, worshipped, and there is no one uh, like him. And it was through him that everything was uh, created. So he's over creation uh, because he was even there before uh, creation. He was the one who created every, everything. He is God, and therefore he is everlasting. Okay, so I'll repeat that again. He is over creation because he was before creation and hence he is God and therefore he is um, everlasting. Now, if you look at, uh, you know, uh, Colossians chapter 1, verse 16, um, verses 15 or 16 and 17, you know, the words, all things by him, uh, in him, by him all things were created in the past, by him all things consist uh, in the present, by him all things will be reconciled in the future. It's basically talking about, you know, uh, uh, the eternal nature of uh, the person of Jesus Christ. It's talking that he is uh, God because it was through him everything was created in the past. It is through him that all things consist in the present and it is by him that all things will be reconciled in the uh, future. If you look at uh, Romans chapter 11, verse 36, it says, Therefore in him all the fullness dwells, and it says, Of him and through him and to him are all things. Uh, so, you know, everything uh, exists uh, because of him, through him, to him are all things. Romans uh, chapter 11, verse uh, 36, which means, again, coming back to uh, uh, how Jesus, uh, you know, refers to himself as the Alpha and Omega. He is all in all, okay? So that is what uh, he, Apostle Paul means uh, when he said, you know, he was before uh, all things. We look at the next phrase, in him all things consist. So basically, Paul, uh, you know, is summarizing um, uh, uh, Jesus's relation uh, to creation with the words when he says, you know, that uh, he in him all things consist, which means he's saying he is a creator. Uh, he is the power who holds creation together. He is the one who's sustaining a creation. Uh, and because he holds all of creation, he's therefore the one who is the sustainer of all uh, creation. Now this word uh, in him all things consist, uh, the Greek word consists is a Sunni tenno, uh, from which we get the English word sustain, uh, which means that the things created by Jesus Christ himself is now being uh, sustained by him. He sustains all things by the power of his word, what he speaks, what he decrees. He's the one who sustains things. He's the one who converses. Uh, he's conversed things. He's the one who holds them all together. And it is by him, you know, everything uh, lives, moves, and has its being, as we read in Acts chapter 17, verse 28. Can somebody read Acts chapter 17, verse 28? Someone else can read First Corinthians uh, chapter 8, verse 6, and uh, someone else can read Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. Can somebody read Acts chapter 17, verse 28? For in him we live and move and have our being, as also some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Thank you. So here we see that Jesus is not only the one who was uh, there at creation, he was not the one just who created everything, um, uh, who brought about all of creation, but he's someone who also sustains 
uh, creation. He is the one who holds them together. It is by him that everything is held together, has its place in perfect uh, order, and there is no chaos. And one reference uh, we look at is in Acts chapter 17, verse 28. For in him we live and move and have our being. First Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6. Can somebody read that, please? Thank you. So First um, Corinthians 8, 6 says, yet, yet for us there is one God, the Father, of whom all are all things and be for him and one Lord Jesus Christ to whom all things and through whom we live. Look at, uh, you know, uh, this important phrase, it says, for there is one God. So another uh, scripture passage where you can uh, show people that, you know, hey, we believe that there is one God is First Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6, and also says, and one Lord Jesus Christ through whom are all things, which means, the, uh, through whom, uh, who created all things, who brought about all things, who is the creator, and through whom we live, who, which means uh, in whom we find our sustenance, in whom we find our strength, our self-sufficiency, uh, who is the all-sufficient one, who gives us the uh, his sufficiency to, to live uh, this earth, who holds all things in its place, uh, who sustains um, everything. So uh, Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 also talks about how the entire universe is held together by his word. Can somebody read Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3, please? Hebrews 1 verse 3, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on earth. Amen. Thank you. So here it says who is talking about Jesus, who being the brightness of his glory. That means who is a rev who reveals uh, is revealing, who revealed to us the glory of God. Like we, re we read in John chapter one, who, who uh, you know, who came to us full of grace and truth. And we have beheld his glory, the glory of the one and only came who came from the father, full of grace and truth. Uh, so Jesus reveals the glory of God and he's the express image of his Person. Again, image the Greek word icon, which talking about uh, the manifestation or the representation of who uh, uh, God exactly is. Uh, so he is the, uh, the, the manifestation, the expression of uh, uh, who God is in person. And it says here that he is the one who upholds all things by the word of his power. So the entire universe is held together by his word. That means through uh, through what God's uh, the, uh, the 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 word the logos Jesus Christ he speaks through his spoken word you know he holds everything he sustains everything the entire universe is held together uh, by his uh, word now just uh, going to a little science to prove this you know you don't have to uh, you know uh, write it down or you know just for our knowledge sake you know uh, the most basic of all scientific uh, principles is actually if you look at it is implied in these two verses in Colossians chapter 1 verses 16 and uh, 17 which we we were just studying um, uh, you know uh, uh, in, in this hour uh, that is the principle of uh, the the scientific principle of uh, con uh, 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 conservation of mass and energy uh, or the conservation of all things and now according to this principle the conservation of uh, mass and energy it says that nothing is uh, being created or annihilated it's only being conserved okay so nothing is created nothing is you know extinguished on everything is only conserved and as far as quantity in physics you know we study quantity is concerned uh, you know it is also just being conserved so one state of matter can be only changed to another exam example solid can be changed to liquid liquid can be changed to solid liquid can be changed to gas so one type of energy can be converted to another for example you know electric energy uh, we uh, 
which flows through the wires you know we receive um, uh, we receive light so electric energy uh, is converted to light energy and in the same conditions you know matter and energy can be interchanged and uh, we have this whole nuclear fission um, but the total quantity of mass energy is always conserved uh, which is you know the law of uh, the first law of the thermodynamics and you know this is the best proved law of science but science cannot tell us why it is true why is it conserved uh, how is uh, the energy just conserved uh, why is there nothing created why is it not annihilated uh, the reason uh, you know, nothing is now being created is because, you know, what we read in scripture, even though science cannot prove it, we know from script is because everything is already created by uh, God himself. Christ created uh, all things. Um, and the reason why we know that nothing is being annihilated is because all things are now being sustained by him. So it again proves scripture that, you know, nothing is uh, coming to a depletion or, uh, you know, uh, to uh, uh, or annihilated, uh, which means nothing is destroyed, nothing is exterminated. It's because, you know, uh, scripture again, you know, science cannot prove how it is, uh, cannot be annihilated. Uh, how it cannot be conserved, how it cannot be, uh, you know, um, uh, exterminated or destroyed is because of what the word of God says that, you know, what the word of God says, everything is uh, sustained in him. Christ sustains all of uh, creation. So if it was not for, you know, this sustenance, this binding energy uh, that we see in the atom, uh, which holds entire structures together, you know, everything in this universe would just collapse and uh, disintegrate and there would be utter chaos. Now, um, science is not able to prove to us how all of this is sustained, how it all holds together, uh, everything. But, you know, even though science cannot prove it, um, uh, how everything, nothing is, nothing new is created and how nothing is exterminated, how nothing is annihilated. Uh, is because we see in scripture that all things were created by him. Everything that needs to be created is already created by God. And, uh, you know, and nothing is annihilated or uh, comes to an, uh, you know, a, a state where it is, uh, 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 you know, exterminated. It's because he sustains all things. So even though science cannot prove it, uh, and has these theories, has these truths, but cannot prove these truths, you know, scripture proves it uh, to us. So isn't it exciting and wonderful, even if you didn't understand th thermodynamics, even though you didn't understand all of the, uh, you know, uh, uh, the way of conservation or uh, how, cons how energy and matter is conserved, but just need to know that, you know, nothing new is created now because everything is created in Christ. We, learn that in Colossians chapter 1 verse 16 and nothing is exterminated on uh, or annihilated because you know Christ uh, is holding everything everything is sustained uh, by him so what should be our uh, response our response should be that you know even as creation reveals the glory of God we look at it in Psalm 19 1 you know uh, heavens declare the glory of God and uh, show his handiwork you know um, um, uh, Psalm chapter 147 verse 4 says, you know, God counts the number of stars. He calls them by name, uh, you know, and this leads the psalmist uh, in verse 5 of uh, Psalm chapter 147 to praise God. It says, great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding is infinite. So, you know, God is infinite. He's so great. Uh, he's so dominant over all creation. Um, that, you know, we read in Isaiah chapter 40 verses 12 and um, uh, 13. We look at it uh, next class. But, you know, all of this, uh, you know, just should lead us to worshiping God, praising him, uh, glorifying him, uh, and just thanking him for, uh, you know, sustaining us, for giving us life, holding us uh, together, and uh, knowing that uh, 
you know, our true sustenance, our true life, uh, the fullness of life, the Zoe life that he came to give us on the cross uh, is through Jesus Christ. Just worship him, give him the glory and the honor that uh, is due to him. We we'll look at the last bit um, uh, in the next class. Anyone has any questions? Any questions? I hope you understood first, uh, sorry, you understood Colossians chapter 1 verses 15 to 17. It was interesting. Any questions? Any uh, clarity anyone needs? Okay. We are time up. Uh, thank you all for joining class. I'd like you all to uh, read through the notes and come the next class um, and also, you know, just glorify God for who he is, what he has created, how he has created us and how he sustains us and just find his sustenance and his strength in him because he's all sufficient uh, for us. He's El Shirai, the all sufficient one. Okay, thank you all for uh, joining class. Have um, uh, a blessed day and a blessed week ahead. Thank you, everyone.